Well guys, today is chicken processing day and I'm fortunate enough today to have a little bit of help. I've got my friend Tommy here and Nadine. Y'all can come on in if you want to, it's all right. They're looking to do some chicken processing on their own place, so they came out to help me today to try to learn the process. So we're gonna go through it and uh, see if we can get these 28 chickens in the freezer today. Remember on the last video, we got this sink here set up and I managed to score a couple of very large cutting boards at Academy and we're gonna try to work on those as much as possible. We've got a drain set up. Basically, we've got two pipes running down into a larger pipe. It's a pretty redneck setup, but it works. And out here, there's basically a leach field black plastic pipe gravel holes in the bottom of the pipe and I think for such a small scale it'll work just fine the scalding pot is set up over here the plucker is over here our coolers are right over here and I do the extra step of dipping my chicken bags in Clorox water before I put them in the freezer just to make sure everything is super super sterile before it goes into the house you're looking for the heat to come up don't want to let it sit in there because that's where it starts to cook it that's there. right so, that's right so quicker in and out just yeah just basically you want to bring it down in there and then swish it around so a little bit so the, the so the water that's right so the water gets through all of the feathers all in the skin no. let's see let me see it. yeah I, i'd be done without them that's probably yeah. good okay. you ready yeah now you get the fire Let's give them one more round. Actually, they're fine. There's really nothing left Let's there. Take a look at this one. Uh, this one's got some leg, but that's going to come off. Huh? We may just have to. That one may not have gotten scalded quite long enough, but it'll Do be okay. Turn that off? Oh. Right on that joint right there. Mm -hmm. Right here? I don't think you're missing it. Just cut it a little bit harder down in there. There we Bring it up and cut like right up there, and then you can run it around and free the crop. Make sure that membrane is disconnected with that crop is disconnected from from the skin what do you want Let's see what i can find for you chicken fat oh the first one's always the worst oh, oh yeah <laughs> i got enough cut underneath it did you I? didn't okay, so yeah so you're you gonna want... you're gonna want to release that membrane right, right there right there so that the vent is free <laughs> so basically <laughs> when i'm when i'm cutting the vent out i usually have already cut Ooh, that nice I know, it's Dude, not So you went more across right Yeah, there. so basically what I do is I go a little bit more across so that all of that is cut and that gives you a lot more room to get your hand in there. I'm kind of still living in the stone ages with my bags here. I just use standard Ziploc freezer gallon bags and I'll take it and dip it down into some water here to push all of the air out or most of the air out and then I'll zip it up and this is my Clorox water so I'm just doing two things at once I'm pushing most of the air out of this bag and I'm going to sanitize it and that one's done I know there are probably some better options on bags but I I really like these Ziploc bags they work pretty good it's so great because this is exactly what I envisioned this little table for <laughs> I love it when plans come, come together. together. Just like that. If I were to cut that thing open, you, there's nothing in it because he didn't feed them the night before. He said the night before you don't feed them. He said you want to be careful because you'll see in a second there is some intestines and... Alan, this is a good example. If you have your water too hot or if you just leave it in the water too long, it'll actually start cooking the meat and the skin will end up tearing. So we'll have to adjust for the next time around. See one, do one, do one, teach one. You're at the teach one stage. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Each one teach one, that's the way the world works. There you go. Tomorrow you're bored while I clean my Breaking them down. When putting them into cuts, it's really all about finding the joints. So you can start by taking the thigh and the uh, legs off first. That's probably the easiest thing because those are the biggest pieces. Basically what you'll do, there should be skin right here like there is right here. So you'll just cut down through that skin. And then you can do this right here. 
and that exposes your joint so, right there. So that's a good example because there's nothing there. Yep, that's a great example. So Tommy, what I just did, I, I pulled that and that exposes your joint. Mm -hmm. So you just, yep, break it back. Okay, and it doesn't break, it just dislocates. Okay. All right. And then there's lots of fat lines that help you out on these things. So if you see that line right there, mm -hmm. you just take your knife, get between that joint and there's your leg and thigh. And now what I do, <laughs> is just go right between those two breasts right there and finish up that break. And that exposes your breast and your tenderloin. Is this your first chicken wrangling? Um, not really. Not quite? Good. Because we're gonna have questions when we go to fillet. Oh, I think pull that one, do it all, and cut it all off, and take that out. I'm trying to separate the tender one, I believe. This yep. is the tender one. And then we just cut alongside it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Well guys, at this point, there's only four chickens left. I've never actually had help doing these chickens. I didn't know how fast that it could go, but these are the four that are left right here. And I figure every time I butcher chickens, the one who is left over, the very last chicken is the winner. Um, so we'll figure out which one of these is the winner later. This has been super nice. Um, these folks, I just kind of taught them how to do it. And I've got, we've kind of got an assembly line going here. So this is, this is really nice. I guess we can pull those. So the first 12 chickens that we did, we butchered into whole birds and I'll use those on the smoker and send some home with them as well. But usually what we eat are cuts. So we've got the uh, legs and the thighs right here. And that's a bag of ice right there. Those are chicken tenders, I believe. And here is a bag of boneless, skinless breasts. And later on, I will take these and put them in a the vacuum vacuum bag there's some wings in here as well the cut off of the the wing here i'm stuck that's what's sliced down right yeah so flip it over first and you're gonna gonna want to oh you've already done that never mm -hmm. mind so yeah slice down the middle you may have some bones still attached somewhere here's our grand champion Guys, it is the next day at this point, and uh, yesterday was a lot of fun. I had Alan and Nadine and Tommy. They came out and helped me out with these chickens. I was able to get help processing my birds, and they were able to learn how to do their own birds when they get into it. So it was a lot of fun. I've got a whole bunch of more, whole bunch more food in my freezer at this point, and I sent them home with five whole birds to enjoy. Now at this point, I want to test out this really cool meat grinder that our friends at Vivor sent us. I'll put a link down in the description of this video and in the comments if you're interested in these but I haven't used it yet I've never actually ground meat in my life so who knows how this is gonna work out but I've got about 12 pounds of meat right here chicken meat of course that came off of the bones I'm sorry it came off of the leg and the thigh pieces those are cuts that we don't really use for a whole lot of things so I figured well I'll just cut those off and make ground meat out of it so let's give this a try so again this is not something that I have ever done with chicken or any other meat really so uh, Y'all are gonna watch me learn this. And my plan is to get these this minced up into about one pound packages, vacuum sealed so we can put it in the freezer. And we use this stuff for tacos and chicken burgers and that kind of stuff. I put this meat in the freezer last night. Somebody in the last video where I unboxed this grinder said, hey, if you freeze the meat or at least have it super, super cold, kind of partially frozen, it'll do a whole lot better. And I, I don't know, that made sense to me. Uh, so that's, that's what I've done here. Let's see what happens. 
Really, you're supposed to practice doing things before you put them on YouTube, but uh, I'm gonna break that mold today. I have to say that is totally not normal. Usually things for the first time on camera are total disasters, but that worked out extremely well. I've got this in a one pound package here. I'm just gonna stick it in my food saver here and uh, seal it up and we should be okay. So it, I think it did really, really good, but next time around, I think I'm gonna try to open the bag up and then kind of just let the meat drop into the bag so I don't have to handle it as much. Seems like the more I handle it, kind of the worse it looks. I don't know. Okay, so that method is not gonna work out because I, that's like a two-handed job. I'm just gonna keep doing it this way. I guess it doesn't matter that much if the little pieces, the little noodles in there break apart because it's ground meat anyways. Whoever told me to keep the meat halfway frozen, thanks. This really gets me excited to process my own pig this year. I'm hoping that that works out because this is, this is really nice. This is really nice. This grinder is working a whole lot better than I, than I expected. Actually, I guess I expected it to work like this. It's just the process is a little easier than I thought. But I think ideally what you should do is just grind a whole bunch of it at one time and then package it all when you're done. That's probably a much better, much better option. But I'm just gonna keep doing it this way for this time around. Cause there's a, not a whole lot here. Well guys, that is gonna do it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm, I'm tickled pink with this whole setup over here. My sink is incredibly convenient. I've still got to cover up those rust spots. My dad gave me a product called Tough as Tile that he has used on sinks before. I think I'm gonna try that. I think it's some kind of an epoxy that'll cover up those rust spots and chips, make it look like a new sink again. Uh, the drain system works great. Thanks for all the suggestions on the drain system. Uh, Y'all suggestions started, got me thinking outside of the box on this and the drain system works great. Like I said earlier, it's just a pipe with a whole pile of holes in the bottom of it, gravel up, up under it and beside it, and uh, no backups, no floods in the yard, no nothing. It's working really, really well. Um, and the Vivor... Hey, buddy, what you doing? Nothing? Okay. The meat grinder uh, from Vivor, I don't think I've ever seen a product that worked so intuitively like that, just kind of right out of the box. This was my first attempt at grinding meat, and uh, man, it did a good job. And I mean, the sky's the limit on something like this. If we do decide to do our own pig later this year, we're looking at sausage, we're looking at ground pork, um, you could do deer with it, you could do elk, moose. Do people hunt buffalo still? I have no idea. You could make some ground bison with it. Uh, I mean, you could just do just about anything with it, it seems to me, and it seems to be pretty well put together. I had it apart earlier, and the components on the inside are very heavy. They're very, very well built, uh, almost like a commercial quality machine. I think that the uh, output on it is like 330 pounds an hour if you really got to cranking on it, and the price is something like $233 retail. You can get a 5% discount code if you look in the description of this video and in the pinned comment if you're interested in this thing. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm really, really thrilled with it. But uh, that's I think that's all I need to talk about. I'm probably going to start rambling if I keep going. I'm happy to get all the chickens out of the yard. Uh, happy to get some food in the freezer. Happy that this thing works. Um, happy with the sink. It's just a happy video. I'll see y'all on the next one.